The original Central Pacific 60 was built by the Schenectady Locomotive Works in Schenectady, New York in 1868, and it was the 505th steam locomotive built by that factory and is named Jupiter. The locomotive the Central Pacific 60 Jupiter was not Leland Stanford's original choice for to pull the train to promontory, but another Central Pacific locomotive, which was 173 named Antelope, was chosen. But the Antelope was struck had been struck by a rolling log and limped slowly to the station, and the Jupiter took over to get the train to promontory for the joining of the rails. Then, the Southern Pacific, which acquired the Central Pacific in 1885, began renumbering its locomotive, so it was renumbered as Southern Pacific 1195, and in 1893, it was converted to Burn Coal, and later that year was sold to Gila Valley Globe and Northern Railway, and renumbered as Gila Valley Globe and Northern One. Then, in the... In 1901, it was sold for scrap. Also, this replica of Central Pacific 60, which was built by O'Connor Engineering Laboratories in Costa Mesa, California in 1979, and is a 440 American-type steam locomotive. So then, for the 100th anniversary of the completion of the railroad in 1969, the Virginia and Truckee 44022 named Inyo, built in 1875 by Baldwin in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and is at the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson City, Nevada, and was done up to appear as the two locomotives that were at the original ceremony. So the Inyo was reskinned as Central Pacific 60 Jupiter, but then sold was sold to the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson City, Nevada in 1978. Then the National Park Services thought it'd be a brilliant idea to just build their own replicas for the demonstration purposes, and the Park Services first turned to the Walt Disney Company, which had built full-sized replica steam locomotives for the Disneyland Railroad, so Disney turned down the offer because they didn't think they could make replicas within a quarter and an inch of the originals as specified by the contract, so eventually the contract went to Chad O'Connor, who was a friend of Walt Disney and fellow train enthusiast, and also Chad significantly underbid all other offers and even put some of his own money into the project just to have the honor of building this replica locomotive, which is a replica of the original, and the original blueprints of the original locomotives don't exist, so Chad and his team had to use calipers to measure and scale up all the dimensions of the locomotive from historical photos, and all the paintwork was more of a challenge since color films didn't exist back then. The only resource available were written accounts of the event and the various different shades of gray seen in the photos. Also, Ward Kimball, a Disney animator, contributed to the project, painting the original artwork of the locomotive tender and domes, and this one in the Union Pacific 119 was fully completed and was delivered to the Golden Spike National Historic Site in 1979. Also, when it was delivered, it was painted red, so... Then, years later, the locomotive got repainted blue, which was in the 1990s. Also, there are, was an article found that was referencing that where they were referred to that the locomotive had blue, so this one was painted blue. Today, this one is part of the Golden Spike National Historic Park and used for recreating the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad where the two railroads met in Promontory, Utah as well.